Happy Thursday, Facebook friends. Welcome back to Facebook. I'm Angie Garza, Director of Professional Learning and Educational Services at ROE 47, serving Lee, Ogle, and Whiteside counties. And if you're joining us back here this fine Thursday in the month of March, you'll know that it's time for another edition of Teacher Talk. And as we welcome in spring, warmer temperatures, green grass, and all the things, excited to be back here today to talk about another blossoming uh, phenomena in our area, and that is the idea of transformational leadership. And so, Stacey, um, as we kick off our conversations today, I would be remiss if I if I did not say good morning to you, my friend, my, my friend, colleague, and co-host, Ms. Stacey Dingus. Um, good morning. Welcome to spring. Um, excited today to have conversations with um, a very good friend, Mr. Tom Tony, as we talk about our Transformational Leadership Academy. I'm happy to be here today with you and Tom, uh, someone that was introduced to me several years ago, um, as I was just saying before we pushed record, that um, when I was introduced to Tom, I was like, eh, I don't know, I don't know about this. And then it turned into a very kind of therapeutic conversation that I think is good for all um, educators in this case, but really the chance for us to kind of sit back and reflect on um, what our goals are, what our vision is, what's maybe weighing us down a little bit. Um, I have also shared with you, Angie, as, as we continue to have these conversations with educators, it is out there that our teachers are feeling the weight. Um, and it's something that we talk about a lot. I don't know if we know exactly how to address it, but I think we are halfway there and that we are having those conversations now. Whereas maybe a couple years ago, we were a little apprehensive to say, I'm feeling burnout. I have these feelings and I'm not quite sure what to do with them. And so we have found Tom, as you will introduce him uh, soon, and he is kind of helping us have these conversations, talking about you know how we can take that next step to better ourselves, for our students in our classrooms and our school communities. So excited to have this conversation today. You are so right. We have the we have the right person at the table with us here today. Uh, we're going to be not only talking about what we're seeing from some of our educators, but we're also we promised we we promised in the fall when we uh, introduced this idea of our transformational leadership academy that we would be having Tom back with us to kind of share how it's going. So today we are checking in with Tom Tony. Tom, as, uh, as both Stacy and I mentioned, uh, is a, a longtime friend and has done work with our team work with our office, work with our educators, and now our educational leaders through our Transformational Leadership Academy. So good morning, Tom, and I'm here to hold uh, all of us accountable for, for the promise we made to um, come back to how our Transformational Leadership Academy is going. So yeah. um, interested to hear, you know, how that's going. We spent some time last time we were together defining trans transformational leadership. So yeah. just just wanted to check in with you here today to see how that's going and to see if maybe any of those thoughts or things that you shared about transformational leadership have changed at all in the last several months as you work with our leaders in Leo Gold and Whiteside counties. Yeah, no, thank you. And good morning. It's good to be here with you guys. As always, absolutely love spending time with you and your your team and the teachers and educators in, in your area. And so, um, yeah, I think as Stacy alluded to, you know, the the challenge continues that we are still fully in the throes of, and I'm not even sure exactly how to describe it in one single word, other than to say this is just we're almost in crisis mode in the education realm. You know, I was uh, reading earlier that uh, compared to pre-pandemic numbers, that education is down almost 567,000 educators. I mean the. The number of people that are leaving the profession is just absolutely profound for, you know, lots of reasons, but, you know, some of which, some of the leading of which are their emotional and mental state, like where they are in terms of um, just their capacity to deal with the reality of the classroom and of parents and just everything, all the stuff that works against uh, their ability to stay healthy in the classroom. So, you know, when we talk about transformational leadership, <clears throat> I think at the core of it, is this idea that transformational leadership recognizes and prioritizes the humanity of those that they lead, right? So we lean in as leaders to remember that we're leading people. And if there's anything that I think has come to light 
in recent in education and especially the work that I do with teachers, it is, no matter if I could just put it bluntly, I think sometimes teachers feel like they're not seen as people. And we have to remember that we are, you know, it's just like we're people and we're human and we have human feelings and we have human experiences and it gets difficult. It's, it's hard to manage sometimes emotionally and mentally. And when we reach those places, we need a different kind of leadership. We can't just keep squeezing the turnip. We, we got to step back and ask the question, how do I better support those that I'm leading than just to expect of those that I'm leading? So as we do the work together, like with the administrators, like you're mentioning, you know, uh, Angie, I think it's been awesome to watch the the light bulb come on. So, you know, I don't think necessarily like in terms of like an intellectual light bulb, as much as it is a realization light bulb. That's just, you know, here are things that probably we knew, but weren't front and center for us. For example, the very first a session that we had together uh, last year in 2023, we talked about the backstory of the people that were leading that, you know, at the end of the day, teachers are people and they, they suffer sometimes from emotional dysregulation. And as I say it, the last thing you want to give an emotionally dysregulated student is an emotionally dysregulated teacher. The best antidote for emotionally dysregulated student is a well-regulated teacher emotionally. And so that's, you know, that's work we have to do as leaders. We have to be aware that they may be struggling and help to meet them where they are as people, as, as humans. And so, you know, a lot of the work that we've done has been digging into that reality. The first two sessions we're all about that was about just remembering the backstory that everybody brings to the table that, you know, when, when we get together and we're working together professionally, we, we don't leave our past behind. It, it comes with us uh, as well as all of our tendencies and our propensities and all those things. And so those are things we have to sort of become aware of as leaders, that transformational perspective. And so I think if anything has changed since our last conversation, I would say is that we're even at a higher, higher, more heightened sense of the need of this, that this, this isn't going away. This is the new normal. And the new normal is leading people and not just expecting process. Doesn't mean we can't have standards. Doesn't mean we can't have expectations. We have to understand the people that we're leading in those things. I don't know if that makes sense or I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, so if someone is having an, an off day, that to a certain extent has to be okay. And by okay, I don't mean that we set, because we're having an off day, we get to just ignore our responsibilities. What it means is that if we're having an off day, I get to address that. I didn't, I am, I, I don't, I'm not just going to sweep it under the rug. You know, there are some things, sometimes we got to suck it up and get through, right? I mean, that's just reality, but I, I get to talk about it. I get to bring it up and say, here's what I'm experiencing and then get coached in how to handle it. So this goes beyond just, a, oh, I mean, I'm sorry, you're having a bad day. It's the ability, transformational leadership is the ability to sit in that with someone and lead them through it. That's the key. And I think that, you know, like I say, as we go through this with the administrators, um, it's just been awesome conversations, hearing the stories, like I say, the light bulbs that have come on, the things that they're seeing. But I think in terms of the issue, the need for transformational leadership, it's only increased. It's only heightened. You, you yes. said something that really struck a chord with me um, to ask the question and sit with it, sit with them in it, and then lead them through it. Yes. Um, I think that we have been asking the question and hearing it. We just don't know what to do, how to get through it. And, and so that is the key there. So I appreciate that you said that and can really um, relate to that. You have been spending some time with our area administrators at Sauk Valley Community College, yeah. uh, meeting with them, I think about three times now, and you have one more meeting in June. Can yeah. you tell us about your time spent with our area educators and um, kind of what you're seeing with them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, I'm not sure exactly what everyone expected going into the into the 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 academy. Um, you know, we sent information out about what we're going to be covering and that kind of thing. But what I try to do in my time with educators is to let's let's get past the, the let's get past the processes. 
let's get past some of the principles and techniques. I want to talk about you. Uh, when I do one-on-ones even with, with educators, you know, I always open up the opportunity in, in these academies that if you want to jump on a call and talk about things, we can do it. Um, and every time that I get into a call with a teacher or a principal or uh, a superintendent, I'm always pushing to understand them in a greater way. And so I'm not exactly sure what the administrators expected coming in, but I can tell you what they've experienced is precisely that, that, that in these situations, my whole focus is on helping them as an individual uh, get stronger. You know, I trust their education background. I trust their experience. I trust their skill. Many of them have decades in education. So rarely is it a, 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 um, a professional skill issue that's, um, that's in question. It's most typically, I don't know how to even handle myself or like you're saying, Stacy. how do I lead somebody through when they're feeling emotionally disrupted? Because the truth is, is that this is, so I really believe with all my heart that if, if we can help students uh, find emotional regulation and show up to class, then teachers can do what they do, which is educate. I mean, that's, that's what they're good at, right? So the barriers that they're facing hardly are ever professional abilities. That's just like tweak to getting better. The barrier most typically is feeling overwhelmed in the classroom, feeling threatened in the classroom, feeling unsafe in the classroom, and then having the support from leadership to feel those things. And then administrators having the confidence to be able to, to bring that. So that's what we've really sort of attacked in these sessions. Um, and I, I'm hoping and at least from what I hear from the feedback that I'm getting, is that sort of landing for them a little bit. The ahas that I'm hearing are, I never really considered that this teacher was a human. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I'm, what I mean by that is I never really considered that they might be experiencing this from a personal perspective. And I don't really know them that well. I know their pedigree. I know what they're, you know, what they do in the classroom. I don't really know their passions. I don't really know what makes them tick. I don't really know what's going on with their family. You know, not that we have to know the dirty details, but we just have to see their humanity. And I think that's what we've started to experience a little bit more with the administrators is, is that light coming on. Um, and then even allow them, allowing themselves to sort, to sort of sit in that as well, that at the end of the day, I have a family. Um, I have responsibilities beyond this profession and, um, and I, I'm, I, I bring me to the moment. Um, and there's just something about that personal connection with the people we lead. That's the true, that's the key to transformation. It's like my ability to see you, you know, when you look at human development, the four S's that Dr. Dan Siegel and Tina Payne Bryson talk about are that we are seen, we're soothed, we're safe, and we're secure. Those are the four things, those are the four basic human needs that are met in early childhood development. And that sort of rests with us throughout the rest of our journey. One of the key to those things is being seen. And, you know, one of the things we talked about, even in the, the academy, is that that's how do we see people? How do I walk in and say, I see you? I see what you've done. I see the 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 heart you're putting into this. I see your passion for the kids. I see your willingness to in teamwork with the rest of the team. Like I see you, I recognize you. Um, and that, it's just so powerful. It really is in helping teachers feel the confidence they need. So I feel like that, that's that been the the timbre of our conversations. So it's not been a bunch of, hey, do this in the classroom or all that stuff. I mean, you know, that's, that's replete in the room. But what we're often missing is more of that, uh, just the humanity side of it. Hope that makes sense. Actually, I'm sitting here with my face all scrunched up because I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm like, oh my gosh, that speaks to my heart. Um, I, you know, I think about it in terms of peopling. Like our our job is to be peoplers, right? right. Um, so that idea of humanity really just kind of strikes a chord for me. So um, if I could let me if I could just say it this way real quick, Angie, and I know we're short on battery time, but um, the if I could explain it this way. So in, in education, we have a very unique opportunity. So we're working in the emotional stages of a human being where they're the most pliable, they're the most impressionable. And we're doing that work with people who've already come through that stage 
and are now not quite as pliable or impressionable. So we, we've reached this state as adults where we've already had that window has closed. And now we're working with this commodity, this, this result of those years. And we have to be aware of that, that people, we're not machines. We, we can't just feed in a policy and expect that it's going to be like, boom, perfect. We're working with imperfect humans that have a backstory that we need to know so that we can appropriately interact with that individual and really call on their tendencies and their perspectives that help them to connect to the what we're trying to accomplish here. All the while, let's leverage this window because we have a short window of ensuring that these kids are getting what we might not have gotten. How can we help them, not only academically, but now, I mean, I think, you know, the emotional expectations in the classroom are just, it's profound to me what's expected now emotionally in the classroom as well as academically. So I think trying to see it in that light that everybody in that room is a version of everybody in that room. Like that teacher is a future version of those students. And uh, so we have to approach the students a certain way, understanding them as well. They bring a backstory, but so do the teachers. It's just that now we're trying to help these people, these adults, the human, these humans, <laughs> what else to say it? These humans help shape these humans. And that takes just as much intense effort in helping the teachers be healthy as it does the students be healthy. I'm Man, I'm, I'm telling you, it's profound when this light bulb comes on for you, like you're saying, peopling. And that's across the board for every student, every teacher. And we might as well throw parents in the mix too, because they're coming in with the same stuff going on, you know? So it's a lot of people then going on. Well, you know, I always love it when you say you, you make it sound so simple, <laughs> you know, about you collect the dots to connect the dots. Right. Yes. Um, and, and that seems really manageable. Um, but then I think about all the other things that you just mentioned, and it's this like literal cat's cradle of, <laughs> or maybe a, a big giant plate of spaghetti of all the things that we have to kind of work through and tease through, because at the end of the day, the work that we do is not making widgets. It's working with, as you said, it's working with human beings and, right. and shaping that next generation. And so, you know, you also mentioned earlier that, you know, we've had over 500,000 people exit the profession. And this is yeah. just, this is a calling. This is important work that we're doing. Yeah. And I, I don't think people are leaving just education. So when, when you think about the landscape that's in front of us and working with adults, adults in education, adults in other capacities, what wh what is it that we can do to help regulate, to help connect with those individuals to help maybe stem the exodus that we're seeing. Um, you know, transformational leadership is certainly a part of that and, and being aware and understanding those backstories. But are there other things that that you're hearing or that you're talking with others about that we can do to really build those relationships and to really bolster the adults so that they can do the best job they possibly can with not only the children in front of them, but also with their families and everything else that are kind of happening in their lives. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And I almost always think of this perspective when, when I'm asked that type of a question, um, in the Alcoholics Anonymous 12 step system, there was studies that were done on what makes that so effective and long lasting. And what they ferreted down to was this, while all 12 steps are important, they found one to be particularly powerful. And that was the step of um, the higher power. Now, what, what that means specifically in the higher power of the 12 step process is that that was connected. What they found is that's connected to hope. What that higher power represents is the perspective that things not only can change, but if I will continue my effort, will change. So despair is, is connected to a lack of vision. Despair is connected to a lack of hope. Hopelessness is what causes us most often to disconnect from peoples, from teams, from opportunities, from professions, is we feel like there's, there's no way we can make a difference. And so because of that lack of hope, 
will disconnect. We'll say, I'm going to, I'm going to go do something in which I can see myself succeeding because I cannot see myself succeeding here. And that, that statement right there, seeing myself succeeding is the textbook definition of hope. Hope is not just the idea that things could get better. Hope is believing that they will get better with my concerted effort. That's true hope. So when I reach the place where I no longer believe that, I'm hopeless. And hopeless is not somewhere that we as humans will rest for very long. We we are we're pretty uh, passionate, committed to living in a place that we feel has hope. So we'll exit relationships. We'll exit situations because we feel that. And in my estimation, in the conversations that I've had with educators sitting across from them, I really truly believe that a lot of it peels back to this idea that I've just reached a place where it doesn't feel like anything I do. In fact, that's the language that we hear. I can't do anything about it. That's textbook hopelessness language. There's not, no matter what I do, nothing changes. No matter how hard I try and the writing's on the wall, the handwriting's on the wall. I can just see nothing's going to change. Um, and, you know, we can, we can compensate effort. We can raise salaries and we can say, we'll pay you more for the hard work. But until, especially as you mentioned, Angie, in this, in this calling, we sense my efforts are going to make a difference. It's, it's going to be an uphill battle. So one of the greatest things that we as leaders can do is to provide, keyword here, genuine hope. Genuine hope. And it, genuine hope is not hype. So hype is me basically trying to convince everything it's going to be okay while I inside know it ain't. <laughs> this is, it's going to fall apart, right? But um, genuine hope is when I am transparent enough to say, look, I know it's difficult. I do not have all the answers. I, I'm not even sure how we're going to remedy this particular situation right now, but here's what I am committed to. I am committed to finding an answer. I am committed to finding a way and my hope is that you'll stick with me in this while we do that. And what we what we give the people that we lead in that situation is exactly what we talked about a second. It's relationship. It's I'm in this with you. I see you as a human. I see you as a person. This is difficult. I'll be a human. I don't know all the answers, but we will together discover them. And I'm convinced we can get through this. And that will often restore the, the 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 hope and cause us to stick with it. So I really feel like that's what we need more than ever in this situation. We need a rise of hope from transformational leadership. Um, I feel like I've just completed a master class with you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I need to go do something now. So <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, gosh, the the power of the importance of vision and the power of hope is yeah. is what I'm I'm taking from this. And one thing that you said that I, I feel like I need to put on a, a wall placard or like tattoo on my arm or something, but the fact that we are charged in our work, in our leadership to recognize and prioritize the humanity of those yeah. that we lead. So wow, how that's that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I, I just want to say thank you so much for those uh, for those words of inspiration and for and of hope and for continuing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to work with our administrators and our educators here in the Sauk Valley area. We so appreciate you and on all that you have done and continue to do, and especially for taking time out on our teacher talk here this morning. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Friends, that wraps us up for this edition of Teacher Talk. We hope that you've enjoyed the masterclass with Tom Tony on transformational leadership and the power of hope here this morning on Teacher Talk. Um, we will look forward to seeing you again next week here at this time. And until we meet again, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and even better Friday a wonderful spring weekend and we will see you back here next Thursday for another edition of Teacher Talk.